Live from Las Vegas, it's The Cube. Covering Knowledge 16, brought to you by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to Knowledge 16, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. We're here at the Mandalay Bay, Bay Hotel. Jen Stroud is here. She's an HR evangelist and transformation consultant with ServiceNow, former ServiceNow customer. Jen, great to see you again. Oh, Welcome back. It's great to be here. Truly so, great. So this is the second year of your being a ServiceNow, uh, ServiceNow employee. You were a customer before. You actually helped get it all started into, into HR. So give us the update. What's new in terms of ServiceNow into HR? Yeah, it's so exciting because I think about when I was a customer, uh, we were a customer before there was an actual product. Um, so we, we built it all ourselves. Well now, we're with this, um, our latest release and future releases, we're providing that out of the box content, making it really easy for our HR customers to implement quickly um, and, and leverage um, the, the out of the box content so that they can be productive and, you know, a lot quicker. What's going on with HR execs? I mean, are we all, HR is something that we all can relate to, right? Mm -hmm. you, you have a change, you have a baby, you know, whatever. Um, you want to do some self-service, you want that core HR to be easy, and, and then there's this you know, new pressure, there's a war going on for talent. What are the chief HR officers telling you in terms of what their main priorities are these days? Well, you, you just said it, it's a war for talent, and I think, uh, Frank in his uh, keynote today spoke about it. It's about the experience. Uh, the, for human resources, their chief asset are employees. And so they are committed to providing their employees with that great uh, experience. They want to keep them, they spend a lot of money to um, recruit them, hire them, recruit them, and bring them on board. They want to keep them on board. Uh, and, and so much of that is involved in that employee's experience with the organization and how easy it is to get things done um, and be productive and be innovative in their jobs and not be you know, uh, managing a lot of administrative tasks throughout their day. So when I t talk to HR professionals, I, I like, we love sports analogies and it, you know, free agency has changed sports and you see some teams will go out and they'll spend a bunch of money on, on free agent talent, others will try to spend money on developing from within and, and farm teams, is there a right way? Uh, you know, is there a right formula, or does it just sort of depend on the organization? What are you seeing out there? Uh, I think in terms of talent, it, it doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter if you're you're going to bring in contingent workers to do some of your work and then uh, hire um, permanent employees. It all comes down to ensuring that that investment that you've made in those people is is you know is good and that you can get them to productivity as quick as possible. So, so in thinking about um, ServiceNow's contribution to this whole mm -hmm. thing, people often say, uh, you guys, are they work day? Are they competing with success factors? No is the answer, but no is the where answer. do you add value to that whole process? We, we love our partners with Workday and SAP and Success Factors. Um, we um, know that without them, uh, you know, we can't provide that overall complete service delivery solution. So we, um, we integrate with all of those HCM technologies and all HR technologies, including some of the ATSs, Taleo, HireVue, to provide that overall complete service delivery, HR service delivery solution for our customers. Fill in those, those white spaces where um, the other technologies leave off. And in particular, um, that's, that's really a lot about case management, um, knowledge management in particular. So Jen, I'm curious, shift gears a little bit about millennials and all the millennials coming into the workforce. And, and we all know if we have teenagers, they're just, they're just not big fans of email to begin with. Not that we ever were, but we were kind right. of forced into it as a, as a step up from stuffing uh, envelopes. Yeah. Um, how, how is them entering the workplace and the challenges of, of catering to them vis-a-vis -vis workflow versus other ways to get stuff done, helping, hurting, hindering uh, people in HR to, to kind of accommodate this new way of getting things done. Yeah, well, whether you call it helping or hindering, I don't know either way, but it is what it is, right? Um, they are the future of the workforce and they're really helping set the stage for how is it that we have to do business and interact with our employees. And you're right, they don't want to do email, they want it quick, they want it easy, they want that consumerized experience that they're used to in their personal lives. 
And short of that, they find it, you know, not quite, you know, up to par. And their um, millennials are much quicker to make a decision whether they're going to stay or leave. And it's based on some little nuances within their experience whether you know, they are going to stay or not. So um, anything that a CHRO or a CEO or a CIO can do to create that great experience for employee, millennials included, it's going to pay off. So, and we see that with so many of our customers that are creating that, that HR portal, that one place for all um, employees to go to get all of their needs taken care of. They take the guesswork out of it for employees and make it easier for them to, to get their work done. So how do you affect the user experience? Because I know in our personal situation, you know, we, there's, a, there's an HR portal, um, and then I see the demos that like Fred and company show, and ours ain't that. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. So, <laughs> could in theory, could you help with the user, when you talk about user experience, how deeply can you go into the UX and the UI specifically, or are you, you said you integrate with those other, other platforms. Um, how does that all work? Yeah, well, we, we really work with our, um, our, our customers to create the experience that they want to create for their employees. So it can be uh, anything that the, the customer really wants. If they, if they you know, want a true uh, consumerized experience that um, has everything in one portal, like an enterprise portal, so not just HR, but an enterprise portal that includes HR, IT facilities, uh, it can be done. We can create links to other systems. It really, the, the, the great thing about ServiceNow is that we can help uh, our customers create that experience that they know that they want to create for their employees and model that within you know that portal experience. So take us. So we were talking before about you know we we love our partners. So so help us with take us take an example of Workday for, for instance. Um, what's your swim lane and what's their swim lane? I mean obviously their swim lane is doing all the HR you know function all that HR functionality, but. What's your swim lane? Yeah, well, so Workday is, uh, it's just a fantastic HCM system. It's, its in my mind, it's the, the best of the breed out there, right? Um, and they, they offer so much in terms of workflows for HR, self-service for employees. Um, the, the area and the gap that um, where Workday leaves off in particular is in the area of case management uh, and, uh, and knowledge management. So with every customer that we have worked with that uses Workday, they, you know, they're happy customers, but they're still heavily using email and spreadsheets to manage service delivery for their employees. And um, this is, you know, this is causing the uh, the HR teams to be mired in this, you know, email just churn all the time, and, and employees don't have the visibility into their requests. So. And now, with, with ServiceNow, we integrate with, um, with Workday and fill in that gap. So taking email now and, and spreadsheets out of the equation to provide that, that one uh, service delivery and, solution. And the issue is that, the, that those systems are systems of, of record that are, a lot of them database-based, obviously, you know, even Workday, which is going to own sort of version of a database, versus designed as the way people work. That's right. And that's really the difference. It's right? absolutely, it's absolutely, it's um, really thinking about how employees um, get their work done, how they make their requests, how HR does that. Um, you know, Frank spoke about it today in his keynote, or the, the, the team did, of the visual task boards. Absolutely, um, so many people out there are visual people, and with the visual task boards, you can um, uh, drag and drop things into different um, groups uh, and to increase uh, priority or to assign a case to somebody else. Those are things that really change how people um, get work done and, and improve productivity. Jen, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, part of your title is evangelist. And, and, and I think it really says something that you were a customer and then chose to, to come over. Uh, and, and I'm just looking at your LinkedIn, you're at le your last company a long time. So what is it that, it, and they didn't even have HR products, right? Mm -hmm. So what is it that you saw in the vision? And it's, it's interesting, especially in the context of, of Fred building a platform, then putting an app on it, and now it's kind of morphing back to more of the platform. Mm -hmm. like, what did you see, you know, what made you so excited to kind of make this transition and, and spearhead this development into a brand new uh, category of business. I, I can assure you I never dreamt I would be here speaking with you either last year or this year. This was not in my career <laughs> vision at all, but 
Uh, back in 2012, I was tasked with leading an HR transformation for Teletech, um, my, the company that I worked for, and it was a massive change, a massive shift for the organization, tasked with saving money, and um, we selected ServiceNow, um, and it was so successful and we, we truly um, flipped our whole model um, on end. We were spending north of 70% of our time in HR on administrative work. We weren't getting to employee engagement or talent development or uh, any type of performance management uh, project because we simply didn't have the time. Uh, fast forward and when we're fully implemented, now we have strategic business partners that that's what they're doing and that's what they're focusing on. And um, that was powerful to me and I, I loved the experience so much. I thought I gotta be a part of this and I wanna help other organizations realize how possible these transformations are. It's not just pie in the sky. It's not just a you know one off, oh this company did it, but we're so different, guess what? HR is HR, truly, um, and we can help any organization transform their business and create exceptional employee experience and really improve and, and help take, you know, here's what it comes down to as well. When you ask about what CHROs care about, they want to move um, out of the back room into the boardroom, right? They, wanna, they don't want to be just a cost center anymore. They want to add value to the business. And so ServiceNow is helping CHROs add value to their business and, 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 and become top decision makers in their so organizations. You're basically saying to take, take, helping people go from sort of keeping the HR lights on to, toward innovation, That's some right. of those things, to, like said, performance management. Um, et, et cetera, and that whole experience. What are some of your favorite examples? Can you share with us? Or even just kind of the aha mm. moment in your experience when somebody not in the leadership position just said, wow, suddenly <laughs> you've just given me back all this time. Well, yeah, I mean, we, uh, I'll, I'll give you one example from my own that, um, that we talk about a lot with customers. Um, it has to do with knowledge management. Two weeks post-implementation, I got a call from my knowledge manager and she said, we have a problem. And I said, well, what's going on? And she, she has a dashboard of, of um, knowledge searches that she you know, turns on every day when she turned her uh, desktop on. And she said, well, we had a huge spike in people searching on resignation benefits in one of our uh, locations. Uh, today, and I thought, well, that's a problem. Well, we did some research. We found out that a disgruntled employee was spreading rumors that we were going to um, uh, lay everybody off and everybody was going to lose their job. So within hours, we were able to dispel those rumors, tell everybody it's not going to happen. Prior to ServiceNow, we would have been in a very dire situation because people would have left. And, and this was a, a site, one of our locations of 5,000 employees. If we'd lost you know, all of those employees or even a percentage that could have um, hit our business dramatically. But with ServiceNow and the ability to have that view into what's going on in our business, transformational and uh, just amazing um, visibility that, that we, di we didn't have before. Un unpack, if you could double click that a little bit. So can you, explain exactly how ServiceNow affected that outcome? Uh, it's simply um, by you know, the, the, the tool being able to track um, the searches that our employees were doing um, and the uh, reporting capabilities that are inherent in the platform. Uh, the knowledge manager would come on uh, in her office and turn on her dashboard and she could easily see visually that there was a spike um, in one of our locations on um, this particular search and it, there, there was a red flag um, alerting us, We something is not quite right here, you need to look into this. And so um, we were able to click on that and, and see what was going on. And without that service management capability and that, those analytics, you wouldn't have known until it was too late. We wouldn't have known until people were leaving. And you would and say, I started asking questions, and what happened? Yeah, oh. it, it would have been easily Wait, come back. two weeks <sighs> wow. until we would probably have had the full picture of what was going on, because people would gradually leave, and then all of a sudden, and then you, the floodgates would have opened. So, yeah, it's, uh, and that's, that is not, uh, that's not atypical of the type of, um, uh, situations that customers deal with and, and that they're, the successes that they're having. What about the relationship between IT and HR? Um, and based on your experience, <laughs> right, yeah. I'd be interested as to how that's evolved in situations where ServiceNow has been brought in. 
Sure. Well, we see uh, if from company to company it's different. I would say more often than not, uh, it's not usually a, a great strong relationship. I think you know generally it's uh, you know IT and HR kind of you know in a push pull um, HR not feeling like they're getting the love from IT. And I just I, I always when I'm out with customers, I'm like IT truly can be your best friend. Um, and I think developing uh, a strong relationship with your IT partners um, and creating um, together that service management uh, approach to HR service delivery is, is really um, going to be their best uh, foot forward. Excellent. All right, Jim, well listen, thanks very much for coming back in theCUBE, sharing the HR stories. Yes, thank and, you. And uh, I'll give you the last word. Uh, your impressions of a you know, couple of days here now at, at Knowledge. What's the buzz like? What are you hearing from practitioners? Uh, it's just, I've, I've already spoken with uh, uh, quite a few HR customers, um, a lot of, I mean just, it, it, and I'm not exaggerating when I say they're happy and, and they're excited about the future, um, unlike um, I, I've ever seen really before. Uh, excited about the possibilities. We have our um, onboarding special interest group coming up uh, tomorrow, over 250 people registered for that, which tells you there's a lot of interest in ensuring that onboarding is done the right way and they're going to do it with ServiceNow. Got room for me in that session? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there. Jen, thanks very much for, for coming. Great, great to see you again. Yeah, thank you very All much. All right, keep it there, everybody. We'll be back to Knowledge 16 from Las Vegas right after this word. This is theCUBE. <laughs>